Hi Sequels friends, welcome to another episode of How To Tuesday, and that's where I teach you how to do something to help out with your reselling business. Today's video, we are going to talk all about how to photograph, measure, and list jeans. So if you've been thinking about listing jeans but are avoiding it because ugh, it just seems like a big headache, let me show you how I get it done quick, easy, and simple. Or if you already have been listing jeans but think, hmm, I wonder if there's an easier way, then keep on watching, take a peek, and see if this helps you out. Hi Zickles friends, welcome, welcome back to my channel. It is so, so wonderful to have you here. If you're new, my name is Heather and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Etsy, and I use this YouTube channel to document my journey. Let's get right into it. As I said in the beginning, today we are going to talk about how to photograph, measure, and list jeans. So if you're a little overwhelmed with jeans in general, maybe you're a new reseller, maybe you're just not a jeans person and it's just not an area you go to in the thrift store because it seems like a big hassle. To me, I don't think it is. I think it's a lot like shoes and home goods. It's quick, it's simple, and it's easy. So once you've learned a few brands, you can really make some money on some jeans and not put a lot of time and effort into it, which to me is a win-win situation. So first we're going to talk about how I photograph jeans. So I took a quick montage to show you what the photographing process looked like. And then after that montage, I'm going to share with you and more in depth in how I actually photograph the jeans. The thing that I think it is important to note here is I did go ahead and time myself, which I've never done before, so I thought it would be worthwhile to give you an exact time of how long it takes. And for me to photograph in the way that I'm gonna show you, it took me about one minute to photograph each pair of jeans. And you're about to see that my photographing method may be a little bit more thorough than most. So that's great to know that it only takes one minute and you're done. So let's flip the camera around and let me show you exactly how I do it. So let me show you exactly what it entails to photograph jeans. So I have my ring light set up here um, and I have my jeans on a hanger. I find that hangers are the easiest way for me. I know a lot of people flat lay, but for me, I get very particular about how it's laid out, if it's smooth, if it's flat, and that will end up being time consuming for me. So if I just pop them on a hanger, then um, they're hanging, <laughs> then um, there's nothing to really smooth or flatten. There are a few wrinkles in here which won't be totally noticeable, but again, I'm not gonna waste time steaming these. Sometimes I might go like this to flatten it out a little bit, but that's about all I'm gonna do for jeans. I am pretty particular when I put it on the hanger to try to be very diligent about keeping it in the halfway point of the hanger. That's something that comes into play a little bit more when you have plus sizes to make sure the overhang on each side is about the same. Again, just for visual aesthetics, to me, the more neat and tidy things look, thereby the more valuable they appear when you're listing at a high. So I typically have my clothing rack over here full of jeans on the wooden hangers. If I am already have if I already have my clothing rack overrun with things like it is now, then I'll just reuse this hanger over and over again to do these stacks. So here's what I would normally do. The jeans are up, they're facing forward. I would come in here in the ring light. I usually have to settle here for a few seconds as it takes a little while on the picture taking mode for the ring light to calibrate the lighting. See how it's getting brighter? And then I would snap a picture. That's picture number one. Then I would zoom in like this and snap a picture. That's picture number two. The reason why I snap it far back like this is because I'm going to make a cover picture of the front and the back. 
and it fits better in the cover picture when it's a little bit further away. So those are my first two pictures. I would then usually come in and snap a picture about here, so that would be picture number three. I don't do that for every pair of jeans, but if there's distressing, we have all sorts of distressing here, 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 then I like to show that to the customer, so I'll just be a little bit closer and show them the distressing. For this one, I might do a fourth picture right here to show that it's a button fly, or I may um, take that picture when I'm doing my measurements. I don't take any of the um, inside tag pictures here. I do that with my measurements. And from here, I would take a picture right here to show the Levi's, to show it's 501. If there were, you know, some bedazzling or extra stuff on the pockets, I might take a picture here, but since there isn't on this particular pair, then I'm not gonna worry about that. And then I would come back here into my ring light and I would take this picture and then I would zoom in and take that picture. And those are the maximum numbers of pictures I take for jeans. Every once in a while, I might have to bring my ring light a little bit closer when I take the up close shots, but a lot of times I'll just hit the brighten on them a couple of times in, um, in the editing and, um, and take care of it then. So that's basically what it entails for taking the pictures. So pretty simple, right? Just get yourself one of those little pant clip hangers. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them at Walmart, and I bet you if you're out there looking for them, you can get them while you're out thrifting. Technically, you only need one. I think I have an eight, a set of eight or 12, and when I get jean shipments in, I'll usually put them all on hangers to make that process even quicker, because as you can see, sometimes fiddling with the hanger is what takes up part of your minute for photography. So one minute to get that done if you have a, a 30 pairs of jeans then we're talking about a half an hour to list to photograph 30 pairs and as I always do photograph them all together batching stuff certainly certainly makes it faster you will get into a rhythm and that one minute may get down to 45 seconds by the time you're at the end of that so really really I know sometimes it's boring to do the same thing over again crank up some tunes Put on some YouTube. You can watch my channel if you want to. You can watch some other resellers or put on a podcast or anything and just jam on through it. So after I do all that photographing, I have a big pile. As you can see, I throw them over my table. I have a nice big pile of clothing to measure. And that is the next thing we're gonna do. Step two, measure. And again, you're gonna measure them all at once. Batch them together, it saves time. So let me flip you around and I'll give you a detailed version of how I measure. So we try to get clever about this because I'm only filming with one camera. <laughs> so I can't show you me taking the picture, but this is what I normally do. I would lay my jeans out flat like this. I would take a quick snapshot of the button fly if I haven't done that already. Then I would take a quick snapshot of the label here. I would also do the label here, which has the country it's made in, because I need that for eBay, as well as the um, um, content, fabric content. And then I would take this, just because it's extra marketing. And then I would take here where it says 501 Skinny. So this has more tags on it than a normal pair, so there's a little bit more. If I run out of spaces for pictures, then I'd either combine these or I'd start to take out some of them. Then my <laughs> measuring tape's loud. Then I take the measurement of the waist and I would actually lay this down. Now sometimes my tape measure may not lay properly so I'll just take where, where the measurement is for the picture and I'd snap a picture of that. So there's your waist flat across. Right here at the um, seam, at the old crotch, <laughs> I would lay my zero marking there, pull this out because it is a little wrinkled, to see where it measures. It measures at 11, so I would then make sure my measuring tape sits at 11, take a picture. There's our rise.
right from that same area at the crotch, put my zero of my measuring tape there. Come all the way out. I'm at about 27 and a quarter, so I make sure my measuring tape's laid there. I'd snap a picture of that. There's our inseam. And then really quick, right across here for the leg opening, which is at five and a half. So, super easy, really. As long as you have a surface where it's laying down flat, and again, you know I'm known for my teeny tiny office. This little table does a perfect job. Flat across, rise, inseam, leg opening. Way more information than necessary, but it shows them it is in fact a straight leg, it is in fact a high rise, and the inseam if they need it. Easy peasy. See guys, again, super simple. And I went ahead and timed myself why I did that part too, and I was kind of shocked to see it takes me about 20 seconds to measure each pair. I know, I thought it would take longer than that. So to photograph those inside labels and measuring, let's even say on a slow day, maybe 30 seconds. So now if we have 30 pairs of jeans, we're talking about another 15 minutes. So we're up to 45 minutes, the list 30 pairs of jeans. I don't know, I think that's pretty great. So listing or is the next step. We've got them photographed, we've got them measured, now it's time to list. Just like with the other two steps, we need to batch them. If you batch them, it will be easier. Now, so before we list them, we need to get all of our pictures in order. Um, and since I use Photo Room, I do like to go ahead and put all of my photos on white background. I've shown you how to do that in a previous video and I will go ahead and link that above up here so that you can see how that's done since I don't want to waste the time in this video to show you how to do that again. Now I typically only do the pictures of the actual product on white background. I do not waste my time changing the backgrounds to white for my measurement pictures. I just think it saves me a time of only having to do half the pictures instead of all of them. So that's my personal preference and it, sh it um, shaves a little time off of that process. After I've photo roomed all of the pictures, I use all Mac products so I um, and I use the cloud. So anything that's on my phone is on my computer, my laptop, and I do prefer to use my laptop to list. I am older, so laptop is super easy for me to compare to the phone. So I use the, the laptop. Now, if you're more comfortable on the phone, it may be worthwhile for you to go ahead and list on the phone instead. So what I'm gonna do now is flip to and show you exactly how I copy paste list a listing, give you an idea of how long that takes so that we can get a better idea of how long would it actually take us to list 30 pairs of jeans. So let's flip around and do just that. I have my photos open, my spreadsheet open with my price list, and I'm going to go into Google and pull up Poshmark, eBay, and then I'm also going to pull up Be Funky, which is the program that I've been using to create front and back pictures for um, my first picture of my listing. I also already have my pictures of the item I'm gonna list saved to my desktop just because that makes it easier. Again, this would be a, a part that you would skip if you don't do this, but if you want to do this, this is Be Funky. You get so many free versions and then it's $6.99 a month um, after you use up all your free. I'm just gonna drop those two pictures that I took of further away of the front of the item and the back of the item. I drop them in here and this makes me a nice little picture that shows both the front and the back and I will use this as the first picture of my listing. So typically I would do this all in a batch edit. I would, after I upload all my pictures, I would go ahead and move all of them over to here and do them all at once because again, I can't say it enough, but batching makes everything so, so much quicker. So I'm just gonna go over here and save this real quick so that I can grab it when I'm um, starting the listing. 
So we're going to close this out. We're going to go over into Poshmark. If I'm going to list a pair of jeans, then the first thing I do is go into my jeans category and pick a pair of jeans because I'm basically going to copy the same template. Here we are. Here's the last pair of jeans I listed. I'm going to go down. Um, I'm going to open a new window that um, has a new listing. And then I'm going to pick up all the pictures that I have on my desktop. This is how I start my listing. And now I'm going to go into my downloads and grab that picture that we just made with Be Funky. So there's all the pictures we have and now I'm going to list them in order. So I just put that picture up there, my two fronts, my up close of my front, my back, my closer back, my up close of my back, make sure all of my um, labels are in order and then I don't know why I always seem to take the picture of the rise before the inseam but I have them listed the other way so I just switched those. Now I'm going to get rid of those two pictures that I used to make the listing because there are less pictures to be used on eBay so I go ahead on go on my desktop and delete those off so that's what I'm doing there when you see me go off screen and hit the trash can. Now I'm going to go back to that listing and copy the actual description and I'm going to paste it over into my new listing and now I'm just going to um, fill in all the blanks. So I go to my pictures and I look and this is the Kelly Low Rise boot cut, boot cut Leg. It is a size 28 and then there are all of my measurements. So I'm going to go in here and put in the brand is Citizens of Humanity. I'm going to go ahead and put in the style as Kelly. I'm going to delete out the features that were there and I will go back to those and then I'm going to check the condition and actually this previous listing said there was phrase on the hem so I go to double check there's phrase on the hem so we're going to keep that same listing. The fabric content is 98 cotton 2% spandex so that's exactly the same so we're going to keep that as is. Now we're at the size and the size on this one is 28 so we're going to change that to 28. All the measurements and everything the format is already listed down there so I'm going to go to the measurements in my pictures and start plugging in what the current measurements are. Again I just use this template over and over again because it's the easiest for me. I have noticed a lot of people are using less and less description now because let's not get ourselves we all know the majority of people who come in and buy things don't really read. So this is what I'm doing at the moment, but I may change this later and actually not even put in this much information um, because I do already have all the measurements and everything in the picture. So I'll definitely share that with you if I get to that point. So now I'm going to go up to the top and make my description. Um, I don't want to use up the whole uh, title with the brand so I just did an abbreviation there and then it's the Kelly Low Rise Boot Cut Jeans and I'm going to put that it's in a dark wash. I just look up top and make sure that that's the way I want it and then we're going to add in um, the features. I'm just going to say this is a five pocket um, dark wash denim jean. There's whiskering. Um, there's some um, fading. Just a few extra descriptive, descriptive words and it is boot cut. Again, not really sure all this is necessary and it is low rise because I have so many of those in over duplicate time. So moving down to the categories, I'm going to go ahead and pick jeans. This is a boot cut and I'm going to pick that. I'm going to select the size of 28. I'm going to go down here and say it doesn't have tags, type in the brand name, pick the color of blue. These style tags are new and threw me a little bit for a loop when I came in here to film this because that hadn't been there before. So um, I just run over to my spreadsheet to check the price um, and I usually go in and um, highlight it when I've taken photographs of it and then I take the highlight off to let me know that I have already listed this item. That's just how I keep track. So I'm going to skip the <laughs> tag that threw me for a loop and put the listing price and then I'm just going to run through these real quick. Overall it takes me maybe about three and a half minutes to list on Poshmark and again I do have a long description. I'm going to try to shorten that down and see if I can get that timing 
down even further and I'll definitely make a video um, sharing that once I get that all figured out. Right now I'm trying to figure out what if there's any other style tags that are appropriate and it seems like boot cuts the only one so there we go I list it I share it on Pinterest and I move on now if I open up eBay I'm gonna go into my selling I'm gonna go into create a listing and this is exactly how I do it I'll go right from Poshmark right over to eBay and then I go into the listing that I just created for the citizen of humanity jeans and I open that up in a new tab and I move that tab right next to my eBay because I know I'm going to be copying and pasting it. I take the listing title and I start with that and I pop that in there. And then I'm gonna to start to make adjustments to make it longer so it fits. Now I know a lot of people have been listing on eBay first because it's easier to shorten it than lengthen it. And again, um, these are gonna be some things that I experiment with in the future to see if I can cut back this listing time because it does take me longer to list on eBay. So I'm adding in a few extra descriptive words and we're going from there. I don't usually copy and paste other listings because I don't find all of their information is accurate and I have to make so many changes, I might as well do it from scratch. So I'm gonna select the category that I have in my store and I'm gonna select the condition is pre-owned and then I'm going to come back to the condition description. Upload all of my pictures just as I did before, the two and then everything that's left over on my desktop. And as those are uploading, I'm gonna scroll all the way down here, open that up and keep scrolling further. And now I'm gonna paste my um, title right here. I'm gonna reiterate that the condition is pre-owned and I'm gonna confirm that it will ship with USPS Priority Mail. Then I'll end up copying the description from Poshmark and putting it down here. And then now I also have the condition right here. It is an excellent use condition with fraying at the hem. I'm gonna copy that. But before I do that, I'm gonna fill out the rest of the stuff at the bottom. So these are gonna sell in the 29 to 39 range. So I'm gonna say, buy it now for 39. Automatically accept offers of 34 and reject anything that's less than 29 because I don't want the low balls and I don't wanna know about them. And then I'm gonna go down and select the appropriate um, shipping costs. As I said, I had copied that um, condition description and I just pasted that above and now I'm going to go ahead and line up all of my pictures properly. The part that takes the longest time for me is filling out all of these blanks. I do try to fill out the most that I can because I know that it helps with the algorithm. Um, and this is the main reason why I do copy and paste. I find that it's hard to use programs, listing programs, because they do not fill out all of this information and I still have to go in here and edit it. Now, if you're finding something else to be useful that I'm not doing, please, please do let me know below. As I said, I know that my listing process, I believe takes a little bit longer than others. I think it can take me up to about five minutes to list on eBay versus the three or so minutes to list on Poshmark. So if you have some other quick fixes, please let me know. Um, like I said, I've heard many people who do not fill in all the blanks and said that they still have sales. And again, I know many people that have much shorter descriptions. So if you're finding that's working for you, please, please let me know. I will be experimenting with this in the upcoming months and I definitely will share it with you. So just going through and answering all these questions. Is it handmade? No. Is it for the season? All seasons. Can you wash it? Yes. When was it manufactured? Fill in the blank. What's the leg opening? Copy it from down below. <laughs> it's just so repetitive, all the same thing over and over again. I'm trying to get quicker about it. So on Poshmark, with it taking about three and a half minutes or so, plus four 30 items, and then plus the 45 minutes, it ends up taking about two and a half hours to get all of those listed. For me on eBay, it can take about five minutes. Do that for 30 pairs and then add in the 45 minutes it took to photograph and measure and we're looking at about three hours and 15 minutes so if i did it across both platforms for both we're talking about five hours and 45 minutes to list 30 pairs of jeans which could be a week's worth of listings for a part-timer so not so bad at all you could do that one day a week on the weekdays and still have the weekend off 
and if I could get even more efficient, we could list even more. So not too shabby. So I hope in some way that this video has helped you. I hope that you've either found a way to do things a little bit quicker while still being very detailed and thorough, or I hope that maybe I've encouraged you to go ahead and give listing a jeans a try if you weren't really comfortable with this category before. Again, there are plenty of brands out there that can make you some decent money definitely can source them in the wild, can also source them through some um, reselling boxes, and they do not take much time at all, especially compared to dresses and tops and all that stuff, and they will br bring you in a decent amount of money, so it is worth it to give them a go. If you did find this video helpful, please do leave a comment below, hit that like button, let me know that this was helpful to you so that I will know to make more content like this for you in the future. Also, if there is some helpful tip that you love that I did not mention here, please go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I would love to know what works for you. Maybe I'll want to tweak my system and give what you said a try. Or as I always say, there are a lot of new resellers that come into these videos and maybe they haven't listed anything at all and they wanna take in as much knowledge as they can get. So instead of just listening to me, give your tips and tricks below because I know that they will find that useful as well. So I think that's all that we have today for another How To Tuesday is in the books. And I will be back on Friday with another reselling video that has yet to be determined. So I guess I better stop doing this and go figure that out. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done it already, please do hit that subscribe button and ring a ding ring on my bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video which is on Tuesdays and Fridays. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I appreciate it so, so much. I said so, so much, so, so many times. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.